Phil, you've joined the board of Southport this week. How does it feel to be here and to be involved in the football club? Uh, it feels good. It feels good. It's been, um, you know, there's there's no hiding the fact that there's been a lot of to and fro over the summer. But um, we've been speaking for a number of weeks now, myself and James and the board of directors, and we've had really positive dialogue. And we've got to a point where we are today. And I'm delighted. I'm delighted to be involved in the football club. I'm delighted to be on the board and be able to invest in the club. And hopefully together we can really have a fantastic go at taking the club forward. You've been involved in the club previously as shirt sponsor, and I think you've said you've been to matches over the past few years. Indeed, yeah. Why do you want to get involved in Southport? I think Southport Football Club's got massive potential. I genuinely do. Um, we've got a population of over 90,000. You've got a peripheral population of over 200,000, and you've got Premier League clubs in the area that are pricing fa genuine fans out of the uh, out of going to watch them. Uh, I think it's got huge potential. I think that we've got a lot of work to do to re-engage the town um, and, and re-engage with the fans and the public and the businesses there, but I think it's something we can do. And you know, I genuinely believe that we can get to a point whereby we can fill this ground and give them something to be proud of. You mentioned in your statements on Tuesday that you've had frank and honest discussions with the club. How have you reached this stage where you've joined the board? But by going through that process, I think you know realistically a lot's been said over the summer by by by, by you know by let's call it both sides, um, and we had to sit down and be honest and frank and, and put our cards on the table, and that's exactly what happened, and, and it was it was good, it was it was beneficial. Um, a lot of things have been said, and there's a lot of things that haven't been said that people thought were said, and things get confused. And you know, by the time you hear it for the fourth time, it's something completely different. And just getting together and getting around the table and being completely open, and honest, and frank was was the best thing that we could have done. We all wish we could have done it earlier, but we didn't. And hindsight's a wonderful thing. But we are where we are, and and we are working together. You've mentioned that you've been in talks for a few weeks, if not longer. How has that relationship developed over that time? It's you know, it's been very, very good. And and, and all kudos to Ian Kyle who who brought us together. You know, and. It, we had an initial meeting, we had a lot to talk about, it was an initial meeting and we continued that dialogue almost on a daily basis, even when I was away on holiday we spoke, we talked after games, when I came back off holiday we had some more meetings, two or three more meetings. Uh, and we ironed out a number of things um, and, and we all wanted comfort because of everything that's gone on we all wanted some comfort over um, you know moving on in the future and, and what was apparent that was that we all wanted one thing and that's the best for Southport Football Club um, and we've put in place um, a formal board operational agreement between the board of directors which my, my legal team have drafted up that we've all had input to and that's been signed and agreed and we have an agreed way of working which has never happened at this football club we have a formal legal document we have a, an agreed way of working and how we will move the club forward and we're all happy with that document and we've all signed it and, and it, it's a first, it's a positive. Can you tell us a bit more about that agreed structure, the agreed way that the board's going to operate? Uh, no, I think what we're going to do is the detail, the detail around that, we're going to be um, announcing a meet the board and meet the manager and meet the players uh, before the end of September and we'll be able to give a lot more detail at that because there are a lot of things going on now in the background that we'll be able to bring to that meeting as well and we'd like to be able to cover all the bases and present the five-year plan that, that I was talking about that everybody wants to, to be part of. Um, so so we'll, we'll talk more around that then. A lot of people will have heard from you, will have heard about you over the past few weeks and months, but for those people who perhaps aren't so familiar with yourself, can you maybe introduce yourself, explain a bit about what you do in football, outside of football? Yeah, um, well, uh, outside of football, I own Pure Business Group. Uh, we employ over 200 people in four locations and we'll be... We'll be up to about 360 people by March next year. It's a legal services, insurance, funding business. Um, and we have a sports management arm as well. I've been my own boss for a number of years, sold one company, invested that back into the new company. Um, and uh, it, the business is going very, very well. It's going from strength to strength. At, in football, I've been involved in football all my life. I played at academy level when I was younger, a long, long time ago, when YTS has existed and everybody got one. Um, I was never going to make it as a footballer, so I went to university um, and continued to play um, what you'd probably call semi-pro back then in the West Yorkshire, West, West Yorkshire County Amateur League. Um, I've done my coaching badges to a level, I've coached children's football, I've been involved in coaching, I've been involved at Huddersfield Town which is well documented at many many levels um, from um, sponsorship, being involved um, 
with the junior side of things as a fan um, and spent a lot of time in the corporate side of things there as well just just shadowing and, and, and learning and I've also been a, a football agent for the last three years so uh, I've got a reasonably good contact book and I know a lot of people in football and have a lot of people to call on which is always handy when you get involved at this level with a football club. You've clear, clearly had a lot of success outside of football and in football as well. What will you be looking to bring personally to the football club? Success. Um, success, professionalism, and that's not to say that there isn't professionalism here, but to take the club where, where myself and the board want to take it to, we, we've got to bring another level of professionalism and, and, and start to operate like a club that wants to go somewhere, which is happening already. Um, as, as, as we'll discuss when, uh, when we speak with Alan, we've, we've got, now got a formal... Uh, transfer and recruitment policy that we're putting in place next week. Um, we will be making sure that any player that we sign on a permanent is subject to a medical. Um, we've got a scouting network out there now and we won't sign a player unless we've got scouting reports positively, so we're going to do everything properly. Um, what I will bring to this football club is passion, desire, a will to win. Um, but that's, that's just the kind of person that I am and, and I won't stop until we get there. I appreciate you saying that more details in terms of the function of the board will be announced in the coming weeks. Um, are you able to say more kind of in terms of what you see your role being on the board? Um, what, you know, what, we've, what we've agreed initially is it, it's a moving feast. It really is a moving feast and roles will settle down over a period of time. Um, but initially, um, as we'll talk about with, uh, with Alan shortly, is that um, I'm kind of the official board liaison with Mark and Alan and, and we're working together on the football side of things and I'm helping with that where I can and if I can. Um, the commercial side, the sponsorship side, it, it's, it sleeves up and, and get on with it and I think the reality is that we've got a lot of work to do. Everything that we need to do is achievable. It's not going to happen overnight and I think where we are now as a board is that we are all rolling our sleeves up, we're getting involved in everything and I think that over the next three to six months roles will settle down and there'll be, some much more, there'll be much more definition to what each member of the board of directors does. But as it stands together, uh, sorry, as it stands today we're working together um, and we're all just getting on with, with, with it and working very well together as a team. Yeah, you've arrived at a club which has been relegated last season and has had a good start to this season. Yeah. What do you view in terms of where the club overall is at the moment? I think, I think where the club overall is, we've, we've had a really good start to the season. Um, one thing that I've seen um, that Alan and Mark have brought is that there's a real team spirit and I, I feel that's been lacking for the last two or three years. I haven't seen that kind of team spirit and that's really, really good. And there's a bond with the fans, that's clear. Um, and they want to play for each other. From my perspective as a club, the, as I say, I'll use the word potential, I'll keep using the word potential. There's a re-engagement process that we have to go through with the town, with the fans, with every business in the town, with everybody that hasn't been engaged over the last 20, 30, 40 years. Um, because my, my opinion is it, it hasn't happened and we've got to do that. It's not going to be quick. It is going to take time. Fans have got to be patient. People have got to be patient. But we're going to be doing a lot of things over the, over the course of this season to get that re-engagement process going. And we want to get more people back, back here at the Mersey Rail. You know, we, we, we should get bigger crowds. We could get bigger crowds. And it's, it, the, the start of that process is what we do on the pitch. And that's, that's the key now. That's, that's my focus with Mark and Alan, is to, to strengthen where we need to and make sure that we're competing you know, at the top of this division. Yeah, I was just going to ask, now you're on the board, I appreciate there are more things that will come and will be long term. What are the immediate aims, what are the kind of immediate priorities now you're here? The immediate priorities, uh, that first and foremost, is making sure we've got the best possible squad and team that we can have. That's, that's absolutely number one priority. Um, and and I'll, you know, Alan and I will go into more detail on that shortly, but that's the number one priority. Um, we've got a really good squad of players, they've done a fantastic job. Um, and th there are clearly areas that we need to strengthen and complement the existing squad. It's not about, it's not about changing things, it's not about um, bringing in people for people. We need to strengthen that squad and complement what the team have already done together and what Alan and Mark have got the squad doing and that's a strengthening process and you know, we are absolutely doing that right now and have been for the last couple of weeks. Yeah. In the long term, is there a plan, is there a vision for, for this club? There is, um, you know, and, and I, 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 again, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it, it's my wish and, and this, this is my wish, so, we, you know, as a board we've got to agree on these things. Um, I would very much like us to um, have our own academy, our own training facilities, um, and, and it's, re it's, it's important for a club of, of our size to make sure that we are developing our own talent 
not just going out and, and buying players and bringing players in on frees and loans. Um, and I think that's also a really important part of re-engaging with the town, making sure we've got some really good training facilities and academy. Um, and, and, and we're bringing play, local players through as well, it's crucial. So, you know, there's the ground, we've got to consider that. Again, that's not for today. The, the, the real absolute key to this is we got relegated last season and none of us want to stay down in this division. We want to get back up to the, the level we've come from as quickly as possible. Whether it's this season, who knows? You know, I, I never say never, but we've just got to do the best that we possibly can and continue to strengthen. You've mentioned a, a few of the possible areas to work on there. Over the past few months, you've presented your ideas to fans, kind of your blueprint, really. Absolutely. Is that still on the table? Is that still live? 100%. Yeah, we, we've got a board meeting on Wednesday, and that's one of the points on the agenda. And as a board, we have, as, as part of the board operational agreement that we've all signed up to, part of that process is for us to put together and finalise that five-year plan and present it to the fans and the public. Yeah, um, by the sound of it, obviously exciting times ahead. How do we kind of intend to go about it in terms of finances, generating revenue, investment? Absolutely. I mean, the, every every member of the board um, has invested in the club. I've invested initially in the club. We need to continue working on the commercial and sponsorship side of things, and we are doing that, and we will be successful in that. And the reality is that as long as we are spending the money wisely and it's been spent in the right way, you know, we'll continue to invest. Um, and, and, and it's as simple as that. You, you can. We, we have to look at the football club as a business. We have to make sure that if we're investing, we're investing in the right things for the right reasons. But the investment's there, the money's there to invest, and providing that we're spending it in the right way, we'll, we'll invest. Yeah. You've touched on the fans and the town before. The club announced two offers this week. One, uh, to put season tickets back on sale at a discounted price. Yeah. And secondly, uh, offers for the Harrogate match, free admission and £4 admission yes. uh, for 1,000 tickets. How important is it to activate the fan base, get the town on board? It's crucial. It's absolutely crucial. We need to, we need to get the whole town on board. We want to be getting posters up for those games in, uh, in um, businesses, bars, restaurants, everywhere in Southport. And we want everybody to get involved. We want to engage everybody. We want people to come down here. And as long as we're putting out the right product on the pitch, then those people are going to come back. Um, and it's absolutely crucial. We want as many people to come here as possible. Yeah. When people come into the ground, I appreciate a lot depends on the product on the pitch, but how do you intend to keep those people coming to further engage them? Because I guess that's the ultimate aim, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, the, you know, the, the ground, it, it, I've made no secret of the fact that my, my, my future vision was always to look at the feasibility of a new stadium and training complex and so on, and that's, that will be on the table. We will probably we'll start running a feasibility on the cost of upgrading the stadium to the level that we need to get it to for where we want to go to with the club, which isn't non-league. Um, and we'll also, in conjunction with that, we'll run a feasibility study and we'll engage a company to look at sites for, for a new stadium. And we will work out as a board um, and with the local council what's best for the football club. The reality is that a new stadium, even if we got approval and agreement, it's a four or five years down the line. And I think there's a lot that we can do with the stadium and the facilities here within that period of time without having to expend money that we would invest in that possibility um, and, and that's my intention so there's I've, I've engaged a lot of companies we're talking about a lot of things I don't want to reveal too much um, but the intention is very much to to my intention is to, and the board is to invest in the ground certainly in the close season for next season and on an ongoing basis there are little things that we can do very quickly and there are big things that will take longer that require planning permission um, and, and that we can't do during the season because what, what I'd like to do we're using during the course of the season so it's a it's a it's a difficult it's a juggling act but there's a lot we can do and we've got to make sure that we, you know people come here they get the right experience both with what they're watching on the football pitch and also we want them to come back so much of football these days surrounds the off-field operations, really, commercial community, the match day experience. Um, how much can fans look forward to the match day experience in match day experience changing and being enhanced? A hundred percent. I mean, the, the, there are pages and pages and pages of ideas and plans, and it's just a case of implementing them at the right time. But as I say, we want to engage everybody at every level, um, schools, businesses everybody in the town outside of the town and and it's about it's about what you know the experience that they have here inside the stadium and so there's going to be lots more initiatives but again people just need to be patient uh, Rome wasn't built in a day and you know we've got 30 years of um, of 
I think average personally and um, it takes a long time to get to where we want to be but we're going to work really hard to make as as you know as many inroads as we possibly can during the course of this season um, and it's a case of prioritising and getting it done done in the right way. Okay we've talked a lot about obviously your background and the off-field stuff if we bring Alan in now to talk about more of the on-field stuff um, <laughs> Alan, from the club's point of view, how big a boost is it to have Phil on board now? It's a great boost, yeah. I mean, today, Phil sorted out something for Liam Martin, you know, um, which I think is important that people should know over the past two years to bring people to this football club, i.e. players, and, and not be looked after. And I mean, in the right way, uh, with injuries and things like that. Liam Martin's done his cruise shirt. Phil's walked in today and said, listen, we'll make sure that's sorted. And I think that's great for for people out there to know that these things will be brought on board with Phil's um, say-so, which is lovely. Uh, I think it's fantastic that Phil wants to invest in the team and, and take the club as far as it can go, and that's that's music to our ears, because obviously, you know, you say, I heard parts of the conversation there is about what you see. Well, people won't be very happy with what they see today, but, um, you know, from the start we've had here, I don't think they should be too disappointed with the play, the way we've played here, I don't think we've let too many people down other than today. Um, but we've got to invest in the team, which which hopefully will take us to the next level. And and that's music to Mark and myself's ears that, that Phil wants to do that. What's the immediate aim in terms of improving the squad that you've got? Listen, we, 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 we speak about players privately, yeah. Phil, Mark and myself, and I think it's important that people know that we, we want to go out and see people watch them where Mark was today <coughs> to make sure that we've got the right personnel to where we want to go. It's not a quick fix, it will take time, it's a, it's a matter of putting people together. We've done, we've done it short term, early on, with 17 new players, which takes a lot to do. And now what we're trying to do is add that little bit more quality in certain areas to take it forward again. You mentioned, Phil, that part of your role is going to be uh, kind of the go-between between between the boardroom and the management team. How do both of you see that relationship working? So far, it's worked really, really well. I mean, you know, as I say, Alan and Mark are out scouting. They've got a scouting network that we use, so we're getting reports all the time. Um, And we've sat down and we've talked about where we feel that we're, we're lacking, where we need to strengthen, where we need quality, what type of players that we need. Mark and Alan have put a list together of targets. I've Put, you know, drop some names into the hat, and, and we've going through a process of watching those those players and shortening that list down. Um, and I'm hoping, um, and I'm sure Alan and Mark are hoping. I've got to speak to. We've, we've got to sit down and speak to Mark later on. We're going to have a chat with him. He's been out watching a game today and looking at a player. But um, I'm confident that we'll be making hopefully a, a two permanent signings before Tuesday. Um, and I think you know we all agree that we'd like to add probably at least another three or four more quality players um, in, in certain areas where we're lacking. And you know we've talked about budget, we've increased the budget, yeah. we've put a budget in place um, for transfer fees. We've I don't know when the last time Southport paid a transfer fee, but we paid one last week, and there's a very strong chance that we'll pay, be paying another one this week. Um, we don't want um, people to to think that we're suddenly you know being bankrolled and we're going to pay any kind of money for any player because that's not the case. But the deal that we did for Dan Cockerline was the right deal for the club. It was at the right figure, and the deals that we're going to do this this week are also at the right figures. And you know we will those players will have medicals. Alan and, and Mark will hopefully be going to see one of them tomorrow and one on Monday to agree personal terms. We'll get medicals done Monday and hopefully get them in place for Tuesday. Fingers crossed. Touch wood. Um, you know things happen and we'll continue to strengthen but we will only bring in the right players and Alan and Mark have, uh, have identified the uh, positions that they want to strengthen and I was in complete agreement complete agreement you know with the greatest of respect a lot's been said but what they've achieved they've built a squad of 17 from one player in a short space of time and that is, an, is a task in itself and I think the team have done fantastically well to get to get us where we are today and we just we now need to help the squad and, and strengthen it and to take them to the next level which we're going to do. Yeah a question to both of you really you mentioned the job Alan and Mark have done in rebuilding the squad completely from scratch it's been a thankless task and yeah. they've done extremely well. Um, does your addition to the club now do you think that changes expectations aspirations for this season? Uh, it, it changes mine, so I hope it changes everybody else's. Um, you know, my expectations and, and aspirations are to do the very, very best that we possibly can. 
Um, and to do that, we need to strengthen what's already a good squad. We've done fantastically well, by the way. We just need to help them out. We've got two games a week, every week at the moment, and, and it's hard work. And when you're training part-time, people talk about the age of players and so on, but it, it doesn't really, it's, it's, an, it's an effect. But when you're playing two games a week and you're training part-time, it's tough. It is tough. How about you, Alan? What's your outlook for the season? Listen, we said when we came in here, when you get up in the morning, you want to be the best that you do. Unfortunately, the last two we've had is not the best we can do. But we, we go to the positives, and I think, you know, from our point of view, and I've said this to Phil, you know, we want to be minimum in the playoffs. That, that's for sure. And uh, we take nothing back from that. And I think people in the town should know that. We're not, we're not just come here to be a number. And that's with Phil's backing, we're going to try and sort of build the squad to make sure that we are there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the general feeling is that these are exciting times for the club. Are you pleased to be part of, of this of course I am. chapter? You know, yeah. I mean, listen, there'd be nothing better for us than to, to get the club back where it belongs. And I know Phil's got ambitions to take it further than that. So from that point of view, it's lovely to be part of it, of course it is. Finally, Phil, if you've got a message for the fans and the wider community of the town, what's that going to be? I think it's come and support the team. Come down to the Merseyrail Community Stadium uh, and come and, and, and watch the club grow. Come and get on the journey. It's going to be a very exciting ride. It's going to take time, but you know, the time to get on that journey is right now because it could be too late soon. This, this ground could be full next season and you might have missed out on a season ticket. So get down here, support your town, support the team, support the players and, and get on the journey. Well, good times ahead by the sound of it. Wish you both well in looking to achieve it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Cheers.